Okay, it looks like we're we're recording. All right, so on the agenda for today, um, we are going to wrap up our um, little Unity tutorial game, and the uh, the big topic um, that we need to cover today is uh, the GUI or the GUI. Um, and in Unity, uh, we can use uh, the GUI for a couple different purposes. Um, a GUI can be um, <clears throat> sort of like a uh, just information on the screen uh, while you're playing, so that it, that can include your score. Um, you know, if you've played Mario, for example, um, when you collect a coin and there's a um, you know little display on the screen that tells you how many coins you have. Um, there's a display that tells you how much time you have left, uh, so on and so forth. Um, so that, uh, you know, in if that were being made in Unity, um, you know, those things would be implemented using the, uh, the GUI or the GUI. Uh, other ways we can use um, the Unity uh, GUI uh, is we can create a splash screen at the beginning. Um, that uh, has kind of the title of the game and some graphics and you know some buttons um, that you you know press to start the game or see the instructions or that sort of thing. Um, and then we'll also use um, we we can also use a, the GUI to display um, you know a little window with a message that tells you that uh, you know that you've won or that you've lost or, or uh, you know, can can uh, kind of end the level um, with uh, with a little display of information. Uh, so we'll talk about um, how um, to make a, a GUI, and we'll just do a little. It'll just be a brief introduction of what's possible, and we'll do a quick little demonstration. Um, and uh, the uh, the key thing is that. Uh, I'll point you toward the documentation, um, the online documentation that has um, you know a whole reference guide and a couple different tutorials on how to do things um, a couple different ways um, and to do how to do a variety of different things. Um, so really, the goal today is just to to uh, get you guys off the ground um, with the uh, with the GUI um, so that you will be able to. Um, you know, to read up on the topic, um, to figure out whatever whatever specific thing um, you want to, uh, you know, how to accomplish whatever specific thing you want to do. And hopefully, um, by the end of today, um, you will be prepared to create a complete game from start to finish. Um, and uh, and we'll. I, I think we'll have time to see how to publish um, the game uh, to create a file that you can either post on a website. Hi, Alex. Um, Alex, uh, I have to let her know in the chat box. Um, second here. Okay. Well, we'll we'll while we're waiting. Okay, there's Alex. Ta-da. All right. Great. Good. We've got a, a pretty full group. I know David's not going to be able to make it because he's got a, a band performance. So it looks like we've got just about everyone. And we'll get started. I am going to um, share my desktop. And pull up uh, Unity, okay. And um, 
now, brief, uh, so quick recap of everything we've done so far. Added a uh, added a ball that is what the player will control, and we added a script on the ball um, to control its movement. Um, we added walls. Um, we added floors. Uh, we gave the walls and the ball both. Um, well, we gave the walls a, a box collider, and we gave the ball um, a rigid body. Uh, so that uh, so that we can so that it will collide with the walls and bounce off. Um, here I've made a, a collectible. Some of you made really cool stuff um, in in Blender. Um, here for now, I just have a little cube, um, and this cube has a box collider that's a trigger, so that when I um, roll into it, um, it will call the on trigger enter function in my player controller, and we'll look at that again in a second. Um, that will uh, deactivate the pickup object so it disappears and increase my score um, and play a sound effect. So, um, and sure enough, I can hit play and I can roll around in the scene here um, and I can roll into my collectible object and collect it. Um, I also have a, a jumping feature um, and you'll see I, I have uh, a victory condition now um, that when I, I have a, a game object at the very end, um, and this is, again, like the trigger that we used. Uh, if you were here last time, uh, we created a trigger. It's an invisible trigger. We made it invisible by deactivating the mesh renderer. Um, and of course, it has a box collider with is trigger checked, and uh, we wired that up with scripting so that when the ball hits that trigger, um, and that trigger is everywhere beneath the level, so when the ball hits that trigger, um, that's your that's your falling off the stage death um, sort of thing, and you respawn back um, at the beginning. Uh, so that's the script that we that we did last time. We're going to do a similar script. Um, we're going to see a similar script today where I have a finish line. And now to, to really make this, um, you know, to, to uh, you know, have a, have a uh, complete game design, I really should have uh, some sort of game object there that's like a flagpole or a finish line um, or something like that. Um, so I will want to add that before I consider this a, a completely finished game. Um, but for now, just to demonstrate, I have this um, I added a, a cube here. Okay, so I just went to game object, create other, and cube. And that gave me that cube, and I can position it um, either by editing the values in the inspector tab or you know, positioning it in the scene the way I want. And of course I can scale it out, again using the, the, the inspector tab or, um, or my little click and drag tool. Okay, and it comes, uh, when I do game object create cube, it comes with a box collider by default. So I can make it a trigger just by checking it is trigger. And I can make it invisible if I want by disabling the mesh renderer. Okay, I'm going to delete that for now because I already have exactly that. And I, I named it finish um, to give it a descriptive name. Um, and so we're going to see how we can use this um, trigger to display a a GUI like so, okay. And so the answer. Uh, so how how do we do that? Um, well, first of all, um, I'm going to add a little something to the script. Um, that we're using for our player. And so this is actually, I just, on the player controller script, and I think uh, just about all of you have at least some variation of the player controller script that we're using for movement. Um, on on trigger enter, okay, previously, uh, previously we set the uh, the tag of the game object, or we, uh, we checked for, um, you know, to see if we collided with an object that had the pickup tag, 
And that's our collectible items uh, you know, functionality here. So I set the, uh, the, uh, the game object that we collide with to, um, to be inactive. I set active false. And then I increase my little score variable, and then I play a sound effect. And those are the three things that happen when I collide with something with tag pickup. Okay, now I'm going to say, well, what if I collide with something with the tag finish? Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, – there are two, two parts to this line. One is get component and finish GUI, finish GUI. Um, and we'll see what that is in a second. Um, so this is going to get a script um, that's called finish GUI. And then I'm going to enable that script. So what, uh, what's going on with that script? Um, notice I have, um, I have the finish GUI script um, attached to my, to my player. And here is that script. Okay, I do on GUI, and we saw the on GUI function I think last week or maybe a couple weeks ago when when we were just introducing this topic. Um, on GUI is uh, one of Unity's magic functions that runs once every time step. Okay, and it displays the GUI. And so here, what I'm doing is I'm adding a GUI box, um, and we'll take a closer look at this in a second. But I'm 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 telling uh, Unity where to put it, and how big to make it, and what it should say. And now let's see. Let's first of all let's see what happens if I were just to, if I were just to add that um, that script to my player object, and uh, and it'll be checked there because, you know, if it's enabled. And I run my scene, and it's already there. Uh, Shirley says, can you change the color of the GUI box? Yes, you can. Uh, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so you see when I when I just hit play, um, the GUI box is there already. Because um, it runs, again, that, that on GUI, um, it runs once every time step and updates the, updates the GUI. And Shirley said, also, can you use images as part of the GUI? Yes. And we will also see how to do that. Um, So the, the the issue right now is that I don't want this um, I don't want this to display from the very start. You know, I want it to to not display at the start and only display after I hit my trigger, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I have this script. Again, this is just a very simple script with one line, really. And I'm going to start with it disabled. Okay, so I'm unchecking that box. So the script is there, but it's not running because it's not it's it's not enabled. Okay, and so now this is where my code um, on the player controller comes in, which is where you know, when I collide with um, something with the finish tag, or so when I enter a trigger that has the finish tag. Um, then I'm going to find that finish GUI and enable it. And so the key thing here is that this this word right here, finish GUI, is the same as the name of the script, which is finish GUI. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to roll that ball into the trigger. In fact, why don't I enable the mesh renderer on that trigger just for now? I'm going to roll my ball into that trigger, and this function is going to be called. It's going to call on trigger enter, and it's going to see that it has a tag of finish because I gave it a finish tag. Then it's going to Get component, finish GUI, and that is uh, 
the script that I added to the player. And so it'll be like this this little checkbox. Oops. Click inside my window here so I can control my ball. And if we look down at finish GUI, you see there the uh, there the check mark came up. Uh, it's because when I collided with that trigger, it uh, it enabled my script. So a few different steps to this. A um, little bit complicated, but uh, once you get a handle on it, um, you'll be you'll be able to you know you'll be able to uh, enable and disable scripts um, you know very easily. Uh, so again, a few different components to this. One is um, creating that trigger in the scene, which I think you've all done at least once um, before. Creating that that trigger. Um, you'll want to add, okay, uh, you'll want to add the tag to that trigger, and um, then you will, um, you know, add these couple lines to your on trigger enter function. And then finally, you will want to add the um, your GUI script that actually creates your GUI, and this is the script that you're enabling or disabling. So a couple things in play here, um, you know, enabling and disabling scripts, and actually creating um, actually creating the GUI. Um, so let's um, let's break um, for a couple minutes, um, you know, maybe three or four minutes, uh, to let you guys get caught up to this point. Um, I will go ahead and um, paste the um, that code from the GUI script um, into the box for you guys. And I think that's a, a good goal um, for now is for everyone to get to the point where your ball rolls into the trigger and something pops up. And so we'll give you guys three or four minutes to try that out. And um, if you run into trouble, um, go ahead and raise your hand, and we can uh, uh, we can troubleshoot on your screen. I'll go ahead and pull up that player controller code if you want to use that as a reference. All right, that's all right, Shirley. Uh, we will also. Um, Uh, we will also have this project, um, once it's finished after today, um, we'll have this project posted um, on uh, uh, on the wiki, and we'll get you guys all a link to that wiki um, so you have that example to work off of. There are also lots of um, lots of examples on the Unity website that you can go to as well. Um, and those could be a little bit more complicated, but you guys are, are I'm sure, getting to the point where, uh, um, you know, you're well prepared to, to take a look at those more complicated examples. Okay, so we actually have a couple people who are, uh, who are not, uh, um, not at their computers. Um, Today, and that's okay. Hopefully, you guys will be able to follow along um, and uh, and get caught up, you know, using the uh, files on the wiki or or, uh, or the recorded videos later. We are recording this, um, so we'll make sure we get all those links um, sent out to you guys. Let's see, Alex. Are you uh, are you trying to get this to work, or are you also having computer trouble? I'm not having computer trouble. I'm just trying. I'm just reading it right now. Could you can you like po paste it in chat or? Um. Here, I'll 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 put this over here if that would be helpful in the chat window. 
Um, that goes inside. That would go inside your on trigger. It's, it's kind of hard to see it because it's a bit bigger on my chat screen. And oh, yeah. Yeah, I should, uh, if I can make that a little bit bigger. There we go. And I think the next step, uh, we may not have a lot of time to do a lot of playing around um, with uh, with this stuff, but you know, the next step I think is for you guys to sort of make your own edits um, to this, so that um, so that it's you know you can go beyond um, you know just seeing seeing code and trying to replicate it, um, but actually you know making your own changes um, so that you have your own unique. Um, you know, unique game. And just to make sure that you guys understand um, and understand what's going on behind the scenes. Welcome back, Peter. Peter, we're taking uh, three or four minutes um, to uh, to kind of get everyone caught up to speed on um, having a um, having a trigger that your ball rolls into um, that displays a, a victory message. Okay, um, if you don't. You may not have time um just this uh you know you may not have time right now, and that's okay um you know we'll have uh um, uh we'll have a sa this sample project will be posted on the wiki um and we'll send out recordings of the webcasts as well um and in fact you you said you might be recording it yourself too um, yes, I am recording it myself okay, so there'll be a couple different ways to get to get caught up. Um, tell you what, let's uh, let's go ahead. Alex, are, are, have you been able to get this to work? For the Finnish GUI again, um, the code for that, it's just like the other GUIs, right? Or yeah, it's um, what I yeah what I have here is um, and I can I will I will both paste this into the chat box and explain it. So GUI.box draws a box, and the first parameter to this function, GUI.box is one big function, okay, and right inside the, inside the parentheses are the, what we call the parameters, um, the, or sometimes called the arguments, it's the stuff that you're, the information you're giving to that function. And the second piece of information is what it says, like I wanted to say you win. Um, and the first piece of information is a, a rectangle, which they abbreviate rect. And um, the rect in turn takes four different parameters. And the first is where it appears on the screen um, uh, in the what we call the x direction, or is the left and right. The second is where it appears on the screen up and down. And then this is how wide it is, and lastly is how tall it is. And so what I'm doing here is I, I want it to be centered on the screen. So I can I can center it using screen.width and just divide it by two to get like the middle. Um, and then I'm subtracting it by 50 because my button is 100, um, 100 units long. So if I want the middle of the button to be in the middle of the screen, I have to start at the middle of the screen and then subtract 50. And so that's what I'm doing there. And I'm doing the same thing with the um, with the height, is that I'm taking the, the height and cutting it in half and then um, subtracting 25, which is half the height of my, of my box. 
And this is one way to uh, to sort of set your layout. It's where you're you're sort of it's what we call fixed position, um, where you're just specifying exactly where everything goes. Alex, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to a different screen for now. Go ahead and keep going if you're not finished. Um, so the next, uh, okay, great. Um, actually, Alex, if, uh, uh, do you want to share your, you're not done yet? Okay. Um, that's fine. We'll tell you what, we'll go on and explain the next thing. I know we have a lot of people that, that don't have their computers um, that will be following along on the on the recordings maybe. Um, so we'll go ahead and go on to the next scene for now. Um, so what, what, I, what I'm doing, um, if you haven't already um, made a second scene, you can uh, right click in your project folder, uh, your project pane, and go to create. Um, let's see, oh, uh, never mind, it's not, uh, not actually on the create menu. You would go to file new scene to create a new scene. I've already created a new scene here. Um, and I call this, um, this scene I named splash screen because that's what this scene is going to be. It's going to be the, the splash screen at the beginning of my game. And you can see I already gave it a skybox. Um, as you will recall, um, to give it a skybox, you go to Edit, Render Settings, and um, change the skybox material. And so I can go ahead and reset that to none just for now. I can go back and change it back later. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to have on my splash screen scene is I'm going to have just one script, and it's going to be my GUI script. Um, so I actually put that script on the camera, and see, I called it Splash Screen GUI. And let's go ahead and open up. There it is, Splash Screen GUI. Okay. So, um, in fact, why don't I go ahead and play? Um, just so you can see um, the result, and here's here's the result of my um, my GUI. Okay, so there's a couple uh, couple things going on um, with this with this script. Okay, I start out with GUI.box, and this should be familiar. Um, the first thing I pass in is that rect object um, that says where and how wide and how tall. And I'm using the same trick with screen.width um, and screen.height to make it centered um, on the screen. And then the title um, of, of my, uh, I guess the, the little text that I'm putting in my box, which is the, kind of the title of my splash screen, is just rolling ball game. Um, and you'll notice I'm also adding uh, what I've called background style, which is a public variable that I've created um, that's a GUI style object. Okay. Um, so let's just let's just look at, I'm going to comment out um, the rest of this for now. So let's just look at that that GUI box. And I if I hit play. Okay. So here's um, here's my my rolling ball game. Um, now you remember when I when I created my GUI dot box, I passed in this background style, right? And I made this a public variable, background style, and it's a type GUI style. Okay. So when I make that a public that GUI style a public variable. It's showing, it's going to show up on my inspector tab. 
And here there are a ton of different options for colors, um, font styles, um, for uh, different display options. Okay. So there was a question earlier, how do we change the, uh, uh, the background color of the box? Uh, well, what you do is you create a texture. Um, and texture, remember, is just an image file, just any image file. And um, so I have a lot of textures in my project already, and most of them are from the Skybox um, stuff that I downloaded or from the, the ground textures that I downloaded. Um, so I don't have, uh, you know, not all of these textures are really anything I would want to use for the background of a box. Um, you know, I'll just use, I'll just put that one on there just for sake of example. Okay, now I have a background there. Um, if you wanted just a solid color, you would need to use Paint or Photoshop or GIMP or something like that um, to create a um, uh, to create just a, a background, a solid color background. And I can change other options like the color of the text. You can see that changing. Um, I can have the background change if I'm hovering over the uh, over the box. So we'll see that. I'll say, okay, if I'm hovering over the box, then change the text to, to red, and that doesn't actually appear to be working. Maybe that only applies to buttons. We'll see a button later where I have where I do something different when oh, it's because I need to add a. Um, there we go. So I have to add a background first. Um, so now you can see when I'm hovering over the box, the text changes color. This is the, what I have under the hover style there. Um, there's other stuff um, down here too. Um, Alex, go ahead. You have a question? Do we script? Why? How do you get all those options below your script? How do I get all these options? Let's let's go back to that. Um, so what I do is I create a public variable, and I give it a name. I gave this name background style, which is like the style of my background, and it's a it's a public variable, and it's a an object of type GUI style. And then when I, in my on GUI function, when I make a GUI box, the third parameter, again, one is the rect, two is the text, and the third parameter here is the background style, which is the, just the variable that I made there. And, um, You know, if I wanted details again on the GUI dot box function, I could go um, to the Unity scripting reference GUI dot box, and I bet I can just Google for that and come to that very easily. And here it shows you um, some of the different um, different options you have, different parameters you can pass in. And looks like I'm using this one right now, which is the position, the text, and style, which is a GUI style. Okay. Um, now, spoiler alert from when we when we want to go to images. Okay, look at this one. Um, there's another option here where it's a rect in the first um, parameter, and then an, a texture which is named image in the second parameter, and then the third one is again style. Um, so that'll give you a little hint as to how we, we will end up doing, um, that's a, I should say that's a second way that we can do images. One is to set background image. Um, there's a way we can set, uh, you know, a second way we can set an image too. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop play. And um, one thing you'll notice is that all the changes that I made while I was in play mode are now gone. 
Um, so that is something to be aware of, um, is that it's useful to play around with stuff while you're in play mode, um, but those changes will not be saved. Um, and in this case, that's good, because I didn't want to save those changes anymore. Anyway. Um, so I'm going to bring back um, my my button, and let's look at um, what I'm doing here. Okay, so first of all, the way we do a button, um, and you can see this, uh, there's some great examples. Um, again, if you go to Unity, um, you know, Unity scripting reference and go to the GUI tutorials, um, what we'll do is, We'll put GUI dot button um, like uh, this is our our, our GUI dot button um, function that creates the button, and we'll actually put that in the condition of an if statement. So it'll be if, and then GUI dot button and so and so, and then what goes inside this if block is what will happen when the button is clicked. Um, so that's kind of nifty. Um, so let's first let's focus on um, on the button, okay? Um, for now, let's see what happens when I take out my button style, and let's look at uh, what I what I'm uh, what I'm using to initialize my button here. Okay, I've got uh, again that rect, and I'm using that trick um, with screen dot width and screen dot height to uh, to put it in the center. And the second argument I'm passing is um, is what we call a, a GUI content. This lets me pass both text and an image in at the same time. Um, I could just um, pass in the image, and so maybe that's what I'll. Uh, why don't I do that first, just for demonstration purposes? I'm going to cut and paste that so I don't forget it. Um, So I'm just going to pass in as a second parameter a texture, okay? That's called start button image, and that's a that's just a an image that I already saved there, um, which is just a picture of my of my ball that I made. It could be any picture, and um, there we go. This is the default button style. Um, you can see when I hover over it, um, it the the border changes. Um, color and the content of that button right now is just the ball. Okay, and now let's um, instead of just putting that image there, I'm going to um, put replace that with my my GUI content, which has text and an image. And um, we'll see now, okay, now there's a ball, and there's that text there. And finally, I'm going to put back in my button style. Okay, and now this has some custom styles that I have um, adjusted on my inspector tab. See, and I have the background style. I've got two GUI styles here. One is the background style, one is the button style. So I can go down to my button style and I can change a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, um, and in this case, um, I have just no background under normal. So just at first it has no background. Um, and I have the text that's kind of a dark gray. Um, and, you know, these are just my style choices. So yours, I'm sure, will you know, will be different. In fact, yours you know, are likely to look a lot better than mine. Um, then when I hover over it, I made just kind of a solid color. Um, in GIMP, I made just kind of a solid color background that's, that's partially transparent. Um, so that, that's what that is. And then I make the, the, the text darker, um, and that's all that's happening right there. And of course, there's lots of you know you can be creative with with what happens um, you know with your different backgrounds and different text colors and, and whatnot. Um, 
so some of these options here change the way it, um, it looks. I, I had my image position to image above. Um, you know, by default, it's image left, and you saw earlier that the the text was just to the next to the image like that. And I decided what I wanted was I wanted the image above the text. Um, I changed the font size and um, font alignment, which you can say, um, you know, you want everything in the in the middle of your button or to the right of your button. And really to see that, you have to have hover over it so it don't have a background by default. But if you hover over that, you see everything's on the right side. That's because my alignment is middle right. And I'm going to change that back to middle center so that everything's in the middle. Um, and you should note that um, the the start button image, the way I got that that picture on there, I should mention that. Um, again, I create another public variable. This time it's a texture, uh, a texture 2D. And um, once I have that um, that public variable there, okay, I, I define that variable and I'm using that variable in my code. To change the picture that goes there, I have to um, change the picture on the inspector tab. So right here I have that ball image that I that I made. Um, the other images I have in my project right now, again, for, you know, for right now most of the other images are like these these sort of um, these textures and stuff that I that I had downloaded um, from the asset store. Um, so you can see, um, you know, that I can put any picture there that uh, that I want, and that's just by changing this in the inspector tab. Um, and I will go ahead and, and put my ball back there because that's what I want. Okay. Um, and final thing to note, okay, um, that's that's a quick introduction to how you create a button, place it where you want it to go, give it the text and maybe an image. And then add a, add styles uh, that you can play around with to get it looking the way you want. Now, what happens when you actually click the button? Um, well, you can have just about anything you want happen. Um, anything that you can write code for, um, you can have that happen when you click the button. Um, for me, I am um, you know one thing that I think we haven't seen yet um, that is useful in this situation: application dot load level and then I'm passing in the number one, which says load uh, scene number one. Uh, now, what is scene number one? Okay, scene number one. I will go ahead and show you, because I know we're we're running just a little bit short on time, so I'll go ahead and show you this, and then um, you, know, you guys, if you're um, either, uh, we may have some time at the end for you guys to, to try and get caught up, I know some of you don't have computers um, right now, so um, if you're, you know, feel free to shoot me an email, um, you know, sometime during the week if you're trying to uh, put this together and having difficulty. Uh, or we'll also, of course, have the recordings and the thing posted on the wiki. Um, I will go to File and Build Settings, and this gives me a list of the scenes. In um, so scenes in builds, a list of the scenes that are part of my game. And uh, at first, this is going to be blank. Um, in fact, I go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and remove those for now, just so you can see what you would see normally when you come here for the first time. It's going to be blank. And uh, what I have here is a little add current button. And so I have my splash screen scene open. I can click Add Current, and there it goes. And it's the uh, note; it's zero indexed, so it starts at zero. And if I want to add, and I think that saved. Actually, the build settings I think saved, even though I was in play mode. Um, if I want to add my my other scene, my scene where I actually have the the ball, I will find that scene and open it.
And here it is again. And I can go to File, Build Settings, Add Current, and now notice that this is number one. So if I go back to my splash screen and we look at um, that script, application.loadLevel1, what that's going to do is it's going to load this scene because it's number one. Okay. So if I go into play mode and I click this button, it's going to bring up level one. And there we go. I'm going to show you one more um, one more quick thing, and then I'll turn it over. Uh, you know, I'll stop yakking at you, um, and uh, um, you guys can start playing around with stuff. Um, just a just kind of a fun style thing. Um, I. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, I, I decided to have no background um, for the box, and one of the reasons why I did that um, is because I, uh, you know, just a, as a fun thing to do, I uh, decided I was going to add a skybox like so, and then I'm also adding. Um, a script, oops, a script to my camera. And I call it splash camera, uh, just because it's for the uh, the camera on my splash screen. And here I'm just in the update function, um, I'm rotating it a little bit in the Y direction. The Y is, is straight up and down, right? So it's just going to be spinning around. Um, like spinning around a pole, kind of. And so when I hit go, this is what it looks like. Um, so I thought that was kind of that was kind of fun. So the last step um, in the whole process here is to actually build the game, and to do that. Uh, first, I'm going to save everything, and then I'm going to go to Build and Run. Um, oh, and well, before I before I do that, I should show you on Build Settings. Okay, you have down here on Platform, you have a few different options, right? This is the cool thing about Unity is that you can you know you build it, build something once in the Unity editor. And you can make it into a um, an in-browser game for the web player that would just go on a website. You could have a standalone um, game on your computer, um, and you can uh, you can also port it to um, iOS, Android. Um, and no one uses BlackBerry anymore. Um, now you will have to. There's a little bit of extra work we'd have to do for Android. Uh, or for any smartphone, um, because they don't have arrow keys, um, right? So we'd have to um, kind of change um, things to, uh, um, you know, either to create buttons on the screen that they could tap in order to move, um, or else use the accelerometer so you can tilt the phone to move. Um, so there's some extra steps we'd have to do in order to make the, the phone thing work. But for now, I just have selected um, the... Uh, um, just this, the standalone, um, and I'm targeting Windows. You can target Mac if you have a Mac. And I can hit Build and Run. I'm gonna so that will create a .exe file. Um, you probably have seen .exe files before. Um, you know those are programs that run. And I have looks like I have some uh, some options here as far as like my controls. And uh, screen resolution, um, graphics quality, that's cool. I'll 
beautiful. And hit play. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, I liked my BlackBerry when I used one years ago. Oh well. Um, yeah, so here here is my game playing. You know, this is not in the Unity editor. You know, this is actually a game that. Uh, um, you know, it's just a, a separate game. And there you go. I click that button, and I can I can play my game. My game isn't terribly exciting yet. You know, I'll want to add a bunch of obstacles and and challenges and so forth before I call it finished. Um, and certainly, I'll want you know a little checkered flag or something that I'm crossing there, so uh, so it's not just uh, uh, you know so it's obvious where the finish line is. Um, but you can see all the all the plumbing is there um, for a complete game. Um, and, you know, I may want to stop. Um, I may want to stop movement on the controller too, if uh, if I've won. And you know, there's a lot of there's a million different details um, to the game. I'll close out of that. Um, there's a million different details that you guys can uh, can customize. Um, you know, for your games, do you have a scoreboard? You could do that with the GUI and just display the score. Um, you could uh, you could add a timer. Um, you could add, uh, uh, you know, multiple levels. Um, so you can do um, application dot load level. Um, you know, you could create a button that pops up when you finish the level, um, or you could just go to the next level automatically. Um, you know, all sorts of different stuff that you could uh, um, that you could do. Um, you could have one scene that's sort of like your overworld, where you have a bunch of different levels. Um, that you can, you know, level one, level two, level three, so forth, that you can click on. Um, just a, a lot of uh, a lot of different things that you can do. Um, be creative, um, and that, and you know, unfortunately, I wish we had uh, more time to play around. Um, you know, I, I could do a Unity webcast every week, um, but we have kind of run out of time um, on the Unity webcast series. Um, I believe the uh, Starting next week or the week after, um, we're starting up. At least the, there are new webcast series starting up. Um, I think I'm going to be doing one on Android app development, uh, making Android apps, um, or I guess, well, specifically Android apps, um, although hopefully some of the, the basic ideas um, would apply uh, you know, for uh, for iPhone as well, um, and so I'm excited about that. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, I hope uh, you guys will continue to have fun, um, you know, building things in Unity. Uh, we've had kind of a little a little crash course on the basics, um, and sort of over the course of doing this, we've uh, you know we've put together kind of a sample game that we'll um, that we'll be uh, using for teaching purposes in a workshop, which is pretty cool. Um, and if you're, uh, you know, at any point you're you're making something in Unity and and you have questions, um, uh, you know, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, there are great resources online too. Um, and with that, I think we will um, we will close the book on the Unity webcast series. Let's see if I can figure out how to stop the recording. Well, there we go.